No major injuries then. Good. I briefed the recovered soldiers and sent them on their way as quickly as I could, but nevertheless feared they would not make it in time. The additional support was invaluable. Your men saved more than a few lives. Though not all, I regret to say. I take it that I am addressing Lucia Junius. I am the Forum's envoy, Forchano Leveilleur. And you are owed an explanation for these most dire developments. Another trial wrought by the final days. I was beginning to suspect as much. You doubtless feel some consternation having been forced to abandon your original plan. But trust me when I say you were right to send the refugees elsewhere. Beasts have been sighted within the capital. Perhaps it was a stroke of grim fortune that the population was decimated beforehand, as they've yet to appear in any great number, but in time. In any case, Maxima leads the remainder of the contingent in an effort to cull the creatures and evacuate the populace as we speak. Once the airships have taken to the skies, I pray your men can be persuaded to join him. You'll permit us to retain our weapons? I wouldn't have sent you after the Scions were I expecting you to stab them in the back. And I, for one, would not consider past transgressions more relevant than future contributions. Regardless of the circumstances that saw us at odds before, we need men of courage now, more than ever. We swore to defend Garlemald, and so we shall. It seems you have everything under control. You will excuse me then, for mine own duties await. A moment, Master Fortuno. You did desire to express your appreciation for services rendered, did you not? I did. Though if you intend to again ask that Charlian alter its course, you will find my gratitude insufficient. Tis nothing so onerous. I wish to hear the details of this grand endeavor of yours. Do you swear to listen and to learn? and not to embark upon some scheme to impede us. I swear. <laughs> Any other, I would doubt. But you, I trust to keep your word. For not once have you broken it. Very well. I will request that the Forum make you privy to our plans. You may await our summons at the Baldessian Annex, assuming the decision is in your favor. Does that suffice? It does. You have my thanks. Excellent. You can regale us with tales of your most recent sojourn to the first one.
Did you hear something just now? banish even the darkest night and to this bitter climb bring warmth and comfort tis heartening to see such an assembly upon my return I thought often of you whilst I looked down upon our stars brilliance from the moon above Yes, but what are you doing here? And dressed like that? Aren't you cold? Verily. I fear for my health should I proceed to expound upon our purpose ere I procure more suitable garments. Then allow me to summarize. We're here because none of you lot are up there. Nor has anyone deigned to send word about any changes in the plans. Food is what it is. At least that's what I thought at first, but then folks got to wondering if you weren't in a spot of bother, so we decided to take matters into our own hands. Come down here and help, if our help be needed. So she says, but it's also something of a convenient excuse to visit a theorist. Oyanje made it sound absolutely marvellous. More so before the impending doom, but still. It's not like there will ever be a better time. What will the aforementioned do? Marvellous, they say, yet not an ounce of pudding to be found. I must suffer Uriange's inferior works no more. Hey! Maybe consider the plight of present company before you go blathering on about pudding and doom? Collaborators, indeed. Hey, old fellow, well met. You'd be a member of the forum, would you? It's an honor and a pleasure to meet you at last. I'm Livingway, Hydlin's right paw. That last bit is very important. As am I, if I may humbly say so myself. I, uh, bid you welcome. To our star, Living Way. On behalf of the Forum, I thank you for traveling such a distance to meet us. As you have surmised, preparations for the Exodus have not proceeded as smoothly as we had hoped. 
I should be happy to personally escort you to our headquarters in Charlian, where you may advise us as you deem fit. Twas with reluctance that I set aside the great work of readying the moon for habitation. Be assured that I did so only after the Loperids made plain their earnest desire to come hither, and I myself felt a growing certainty that their contributions here would prove invaluable. Tis trite, perhaps, but I followed my heart. esteemed philosopher of Eld. Nevertheless, tis my hope that what little knowledge I shared shall serve them well, and perchance help save us all. Will thou attend us at the Forum and lend thine own wisdom? If that's all quite settled, can we start moving before Urianger catches his death? Even I'm freezing out here. Oh, I dare say you'll warm up quickly once you're aboard the airship. Sat shoulder to shoulder with our fur-covered friends.
There is a matter I wish to raise with you before we enter. We are here to listen and to learn. But if the Forum's plans are more or less what I expect, then I should like to make a proposal that will serve our ends. By your leave, of course. I don't see why not. Your words and wits have gotten us this far. Agreed. I will present our queries so that you may consider the most advantageous way to advance your proposal without distraction. Thank you, everyone. If I may have your attention, the ad hoc session will now commence. The purpose of today's assembly is to brief the Scions of the Seventh Dawn at their request on the Great Exodus. You may enter. On behalf of the Forum, I commend your heroic actions on the Magna Glacius. We shall not soon forget your service to us and the people of Radzadhan. The Satrap, whom we have informed of the refugees' new arrangements, sings your praises as well. As an expression of our gratitude, we will endeavor to answer your questions as fully and openly as we are able. Then let us begin. First, it is the Forum's objective to ferry the life and knowledge of this star to the Moon. Am I correct? You are. It is for this purpose that Charlian has labored these many long years. We have collected biological samples and scientific records from across the star. When the time comes, they will be moved from their places in Labyrinthos and Numenon and conveyed to safety. Once that critical task has been accomplished, we will begin transporting the Charlian citizenry, which has been categorized into groups. The earliest arrivals are to ensure hospitable environs for those who come after. Following our people, we will send those of other nations in turn, beginning with our allies. Radzat Han was foremost among these. But since the final days have already come to Thavnir, we saw fit to include the refugees with earlier groupings. An ambitious plan. You have accounted for the safety of all nations and tribes then? As many as we can. And how, pray tell, do you decide who to leave behind? To journey beyond the sky is an unprecedented and immeasurably difficult endeavor. Introducing sources of inevitable conflict would condemn all to certain death. Questions as to the validity of that approach aside... Are your plans proceeding apace? We're under the impression that your primary means of celestial transportation is incomplete. If only in that it does not meet our optimal parameters, that is correct. This arc, as some have taken to calling it, is fully operational and could be launched even today. However, the final days have progressed more quickly than we anticipated. 
At present, the ship is incapable of attaining speed sufficient to meet our evacuation targets. Should we put the vessel into service, as it is now, we will be unable to travel to the moon and back quickly enough to complete the necessary number of trips. Precious lives and knowledge will be lost. Seven hells. Is there anything to be done? The ether burner, the primary means of propulsion once the craft is in the space between stars, is undergoing testing to determine whether it can be made more efficient. Though cargo is being loaded for the initial phase of the Exodus, we are prepared to continue our experimentation up to the day before launch, should it prove necessary. What if the Scions were to solve your problem? We shall help devise a means to improve the ether burner's efficiency on two conditions. If we succeed, you must allow us to meet with Hydaelyn. It was simple enough to deduce. You have a Concord, and so you would never have abandoned the Anti-Tower had you no other means of communication. One far more convenient, I suspect. The second condition, also to be met upon our success, is that we be permitted to propose another use for your Ark. We would be at liberty to refuse this proposal. Of course. If we cannot prove its merit to the 99 here, who are we to stake on it the lives of all peoples of this star? Delightful as always, Master Alfino. <laughs> oh, we couldn't have asked for a finer plan. Allow us to solve this complex engineering problem of which we were entirely unaware until moments ago. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> the satire writes itself. Yet, what field has not benefited from a change in perspective? When we are at wit's end, what we need is not the same dry theories recited ad nauseam, but fresh inspiration. I, for one, have faith in my erstwhile students to provide it, and I find their terms to be perfectly acceptable. Order! Order! We have no time to waste on debate. I call a vote. All in favor of agreeing to the Scion's terms? Seventy-one in favor, twenty-eight against. The ayes have it. Fortuneau, as the architect of this project, you are the best candidate to show them its current state. And bear in mind that regardless of your personal misgivings, this is the will of the Forum. Very well. I call this session to a close. Return to your tasks with urgency. The final days wait for none.
could swap them out. No, been there, done that. Damn near lost me eyebrows. Think, Coco, think! We'd be well on our way to paradise. Visionaries patting themselves on the backs for their grand accomplishments if you'd only think! Yes, that does sound rather lovely. Yeah! I mean, Master Force, you know, what a pleasant surprise. <gasps> We're not blasting off already, are we? The schedule remains unchanged, for better or worse. Which is why the Forum has elected to accept assistance in resolving the ether burner conundrum. Huh. Not seen you lot down here before. There are Archons among their number, but engineering is not their expertise. Nevertheless, the Forum concedes the slim possibility that they may have insights to offer. If not, you are at liberty to return them to the surface, by whatever means you see fit. I assure you that won't be necessary. Now, about your troubles with the Etherburner. Aye, aye, I'll walk you through it. Suppose I could do with a change of pace. As the name ought to tell you, the ether burner burns ether, ambient or otherwise, and transforms it into motive force. Think of it like a giant bomb that never stops exploding. Even out in that black void where the ether's right sparse, it's strong enough to move our arc. <laughs> and it probably won't kill you like an actual bomb. <sighs> but it ain't perfect. According to my calculations, to travel to the moon and back fast enough for the forum's liking, the conversion rate needs to be 6% more efficient. A measly 6%, you say? But if I could have squeezed even another 0.6 out of it, don't you think I'd have built it that way in the first place? Hast thou consulted with the Loperates? Yes, they too are conducting their own research, for lack of a ready answer. The Moon's propulsion systems are considerable, naturally, yet they are commensurately massive. It is no easy feat to convert their technology into an efficient means of propulsion for a teeny tiny toy boat, as they say, and as I most certainly do not. Yes, exactly! Damn it all, I asked for a fine adamantite and they send me uppity rabbits with inscrutable, ancient, incompatible technology! You're trying to drive me mad! Do you speak of elegant refined adamantite, perchance? You know of it? Only in the most general terms, I'm afraid. Twas an alloy of elegant make but the secrets of its production were closely guarded. As I recall, the record stated it was vital to Dalamud's construction and launch. Oi, that's the stuff. No material more conductive far as I know. Slotting some in's like blowing up a dam and watching the River of Aoife come rushing through. I ain't a living soul that knows how to make it, though. We were fortunate enough to salvage some for the ether burner, just a wee bit, mind, from a chunk of Dalamud that came hurtling into the northern empty during the calamity. With more? Well, that extra 6% efficiency will be child's play. It's a crying shame that we've no other sources. Surely the many shards of Dalamud scattered throughout Eorzea would suffice. Why not get the refined adamantite from them? Oh, <laughs> we tried, believe you me. But only a few specialised pieces would have had any in them to begin with. Drive calls from Ragnarok class internment hulks. Those are the prize bits we really need. According to the gleaners, getting to them means delving deep into the shards. And the defences are still very operational and very eager to blow them up. It's rough going in there. 
even for the Queen. I'm sure they'd make it out alive. That may be for the best, though you doubtless find the task too dull for your liking. Hmm. There are multiple internment hulks in Eorzea alone, so handling this ourselves may not be the most efficient option. Rather, if we could salvage Adamantite from the shards simultaneously... Thancred, is the link shell we established before you went to Garlemald still active? Of course. The floor is yours. What's all this? Gathering firewood, so to speak. We alone can accomplish little, but joined by others, we may yet build a bonfire to carry us heaven's ward. This is Alphano. The Scions have need of you. Understood. I will contact the Lord Commander and dispatch our finest at once. My sisters are somewhat preoccupied with the final days, so I will lead the Twelvesford expedition myself. Are you aware of any other sources of refined adamantite? Logically, such an invaluable alloy would have been utilized solely where absolutely necessary, in components intended to conduct or collect surpassing amounts of ether. Any extant instrumentation or devices would have likely found their way into the hands of etherologists or enthusiasts. Magical artifacts of Allegan design? The Eastern Alliance will send word to one and all. Are there other ways we may offer aid? No shards of the Lesser Moon scar our soil, but our stake in this cause is no less for it. Is there anything in Othered that might be of use to you? Othered, you say? <laughs> you got friends in far places, lad. Any road, if you're offering, I wouldn't say no to one of those Far Eastern sacred relics. Some of them can hold enough ether to summon a whole damn primal. Combine a source like that with the ether burner, and three, two, one, kaboom! I gather you heard his explosive enthusiasm. Might you secure us a suitable relic? It shall be done. I know little of machines, but I promise we will do our utmost to gather the materials you need to finish your starship. I am glad for the work, in truth. Better to busy oneself than wait and fret over disasters foretold. Then why are we all still standing about yapping this plunder for the taking? And I'm a born plunderer. I'll be an old Charlian before you know it. Start mixing the grog! I'm certain that can be arranged. Thank you all, and do be careful. Just like that. Aye, just like that. Our refined adamantite is on its way. Now let us consider our next steps, shall we? There's yet much to be done.
course of action is clear. We must harvest refined adamantite from the shards of Dalamud and procure arcane relics of Alagan make. Summon the best and brightest of our immortal flames and form an expeditionary party at once. Call upon the Sultan Sworn and brass blades for support as you must. Papashan, send word to the guilds. We will require the expertise of master artisans if we are to have any hope of identifying and recovering these elusive materials. Fear guys, we have need of your stone torches. They are to assist the immortal flames in scouring the ruins and to help secure the surrounding areas. I trust I can count on your support. As commander of the stone torches, my son Zimberk will personally see it done. Pippin, I would have you lead the raiding party. Assemble your finest, and with Tizona's blade, clear the way. Lord Lollarito, I pray you take charge of the search for Alagon relics. Surely you know of some being traded on open or clandestine markets, or sleeping in collector's vaults. Of course, I ask not that you do this out of the kindness of your heart. By all means, profit on the transactions. I wish you the joy of it. The final days descend upon our world. If circumstances are truly as dire as they say, Uldar's best efforts may be for naught. And yet, when we Aeorzeans rose from the ashes to rebuild our broken realm, did we not learn one simple truth? That which seems all but impossible to overcome alone may yet be possible if we stand together. It was the Scions who united us then, and it is the Scions who call upon us now. Uldar will answer that call. We will summon our courage and join the fight for our world's future. You know your duties. I, Nanamo Ulnamo, 17th in the line of all, bid you good luck and good speed. We fielded a goodly number, but our ranks are heavy with healers, and an abundance of restorative magics will be of little help in destroying Dalamud's defenses. Still, it has ever been thus with Gridania. We must steel ourselves for a protracted engagement. In that case, might I suggest taking us along? Commander Hext, what are you doing here? None of the shards in Girabania are big enough to hold an internment hulk. So we said to ourselves, why not lend our neighbors a hand? We thought you might be short on people with a talent for breaking things. While it pains me to admit it, you are right. Our artificiency is so plain to see. It might have been a lifetime ago, but I was once one of the Scions assigned to the Shroud. I know this forest well. I know your people. And I know we will be stronger if we fight this fight together.
Then I will impose upon you with a clear conscience. Come, let us speak of how to integrate our forces. I won't let it all be for nothing. I promise you, Papalima. to waste, brother. Everyone has already... Ah. And so, in summation, the Eastern Alliance, as well as the Honorable Lord Lollarito himself, reached out to me for assistance in procuring these treasures of the Divine, and I, in turn, do beseech the Confederacy for aid. Hmm? Is that...? Hancock? What a surprise this is. And a fortuitous one at that. I have a favor to ask, you see. 